we have learned how to describe planes and lines in 3D. Now we can use these descriptions to compute, for example, the distance from a point to a plane. Nice to know, of course, and also a nice application of what we've learned before. By the way, do not learn some formulas by heart from this example, but try to understand and follow the procedure, since you can apply the ideas to similar geometric problems you may encounter yourself. So, let's see. Here we have our plane V in red. We have a point P in blue. I want to find the distance from P to the plane V. So, what's the construction? How am I going to do that? Well, the idea is to find the line L here, intersecting the plane V, the point Q, and normal to V. That means that since L is normal to V, orthogonal to V, that the distance from P to V is exactly the same as the distance from P to Q, because V and L are intersecting each other in a Q. So the problem now is to find first the line L, and then find the point Q. Because if you have the point Q, then we can compute the distance from P to, Q to V, which is the same as the distance from P to Q. So, that's the program. Quite a long program, right? First, let us take an ex explicit example for this. So, let's take V equals X plus Y plus Z equals 1, and P the point 1, 2, 3. Now, how can we find the line L? Well, L goes through P, so L is R of T equals R0 plus T times V. That's always true. We know it has to go through 1, 2, 3, because it has to go through P. But what about the direction vector? Well, there comes the geometry to help. This line L is orthogonal to the plane V. That's how you get fastest to V. That means that this direction of L is exactly along the normal of the plane V. And we can find normal. The normal consists of the components before the x, the y, and the z, because those were the a and the b and the c from the normal. So the normal is given by 1, 1, 1. So that's how we find the line L. R0 plus t times v, 1, 2, 3 plus t times 1, 1, 1. There we have our L. Second problem. Now we have our line L. How can we find Q? Well, for the point Q, we know that it is on the line, so it has to satisfy, x, y, and z have to satisfy the parametric equation of the line. So x equals 1 plus t, y equals 2 plus t, and z equals 3 plus t. But we also know that it has to be in the plane, so the x, y, and z also have to satisfy the equation of the plane over here. So if we substitute x, y, and z in the plane, we get x plus y plus z equals 1. So 1 plus t plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus t equals 1. Or if we work out everything, we have 6 plus 3t equals 1, or t equals minus 5 over 3. But now we know t equals minus 5 over 3. Now we can find q, because for q we know that t has to be equal to minus 5 over 3. Substituted in the parametric equation over here, we find q. Uh, 1 minus 5 over 3, minus 2 over 3, 2 minus 5 over 3, 1 over 3, 3 minus 5 over 3 equals 9 over 3, minus 5 over 3 equals 4 over 3. So, almost there, because now we have found our point Q. And now we can compute the vector going from Q to P, or from uh, P to Q, 1 to 3 minus Q, which gives us our vector. 5 over 3, 5 over 3, 5 over 3. So going from Q to P, you have to go along 5 over 3, 5 over 3, and 5 over 3. That's the vector V. Now finally, there we are. Uh, the length of V, vector from P to Q, gives you exactly the distance from P to Q, which is the same as the distance from P to V. So we compute the length of V, which is the square root of 5 over 3 squared, 5 over 3 squared, which 5 over 3 squared which equals uh, the square root of uh, uh, 75 over uh, 9. So if you work, uh, work that out, you get uh, f uh, 5 times 
uh, square root of 3 over square root of 3 or 5 over square root of 3. And that is the distance from the point P to the uh, plane V. And again, never learn such a formula by heart, but always try to follow the reasoning, to follow the geometric ideas, because then you can apply it to your own problems.